We're celebrating poetry with poem in your pocket day. So I'm going to do a little something like this. I got a poem in my pocket, a pocket full of poems. Words in my you know what? I already did that on my first lesson. So I'm going to have to switch it up. I'm going to have to do it a little something like this. I got a poem in my pocket. I got a poem that's pickled with peppers in my pocket. I win a slam competition. Take all my competitors to Johnny Rockets. Cause I got a supercalifragilisticexpialidocious poem in my pocket for any braggadocious poet popping poisonous pentamina. Don't you know I spit five feet iams? I'm not Sam I am, but I do eat green egg ham and poets from all these poems that I got in my pocket. I got a SpongeBob SquarePants. I'll make you do the square dance. Do si do re mi fa so la ti. Dome my pocket. I caught Sally selling seashells at the seashore, so I bought one. Spat a poem in a nutshell. Then I climbed up to the Empire stage and let the whole world hear my hey diddle diddle. I got a poem in the middle. All other poets step aside and hide because I got a poem in my pocket for any Billy or Mandy, Monica or Brandy. And I swear, all the poems in my pocket are mine. If I'm lying, I'm flying. I gotta clear up the air with this question. Are the poems in your pocket really yours? Yes. Are the poems in your pocket really yours? Yes. I got a poem in my pocket. The poems in my pocket are mine. It's all mine. It's all mine. That was Rob Hilton and his children live from his backyard doing his version of I got a poem in my pocket. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Poem in Your Pocket Day, which was started in 2008 in New York City. And then from there, it expanded to across the country. And one of the reasons why National Poetry Month and Poem in Your Pocket Day was started is to celebrate words. Many of us, when we hear the word poetry, we think to ourselves, no! Tension breaker had to be done. Or we may read a poem and then we may look around, look at the teacher, and we may say, What? What? But I've learned over the years that if you find the right book, the right poet, and the right poem, that poetry can be awesome! Don't be afraid to explore the world of poetry around you. You may find some poems you love. You may find some poems that you don't like at all. But I'm telling you, if you open your eyes, there are poems and poetry everywhere. It's on commercials. It's in your favorite song. If you look on social media, people post short poems all the time. And poets on YouTube have gotten millions of hits across the world. So don't be afraid to explore poetry. Look at your favorite books in the library, from Dr. Seuss to Shel Silverstein. Bobby Katz wrote pocket poem books. There's funny poetry books. There's books that use hip hop songs and classic poems. Sarah Holbrook, she writes about school life. She has amazing books. Langston Hughes, my personal favorite, to Nikki Grimes and Mahogany Brown who write about social issues that are going on today. Poems are everywhere. One of the books I've been reading lately is There's a Button in My Belly. There are poems in this poetry book that are written in the spirit of Shel Silverstein. It's written by Tony Jackson, who is not only a poet, but he is a fourth grade teacher. And this book is, you know what? I'm not going to tell you about the book. Let's just hear a poem from it right now. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm going to read a poem called A uh, T-Rex is a Terrible Pet. <laughs> I know, it's funny already. Okay, okay, here we, okay, here we go. A uh, T-Rex is a terrible pet, and if you disagree, then I bet that a T-Rex you never have met. If you had, then you'd know all the pain and the strain and the stress and the mess and how upset you actually get. There's never a bathroom that's big enough. There's no hole in the ground you can dig enough, and whatever you give it, it's bound to be livid. You'll never be able to get enough. And don't ever try brushing its teeth. Its breath smells like sweaty feet wrapped in rotting meat. In short, it reeks. A T-Rex shakes the ground when it walks. It wakes the whole town when it talks. 
It speaks in loud roars. It can't fit into doors. And with every step taken, it breaks apart floors. Its manners are terribly, terribly poor. Is it still really awesome? Sure. Just not when it's yours. <laughs> oh, you get it? Oh, it's, it's, <laughs> oh. Bro, that was messed up. That that was that was really that was really uncalled for. That was Mr. Jackson with A T-Rex is a Terrible Pet from his book, There's a Button in My Belly. Poems are really fun to read if you find the right poem book that you enjoy. They're short, they're quick reads, they have rhythm to it. So books are pretty cool. I already filled up this book with ideas. We should be able to finish by January. Today we are going to make an origami pocket that is going to hold our pocket poem. So the first thing that we're going to do is we need a square piece of paper and we're going to take that square piece of paper and we are going to fold it corner to corner and make a train. Then we are going to take one corner and put it to the middle of the other side. Then we are going to take this other corner, the opposite corner, and we're going to go to the middle of that fold. And then we're going to go right here. And then we are going to fold it down. So that should leave you a space right here. And we are just going to fold. We're going to fold it inside. And then we're going to take that other flap. And we're going to stuff it in. And boop, 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 we have a pocket for our poem. Now, nobody wants to hang out with a boring old plain origami pocket. Nobody wants that. So now it looks like this. So on here I wrote, I got a poem in my pocket. And on the back I wrote, poems, all these poems, they keep falling out my head. So make sure you decorate your origami pocket for your poem. And then, you know, what you do is you write your own poem or you find a poem that you love, maybe some song lyrics, and you write them on the paper that is in the link below. I found a poem that I really love. It reminds me of why I'm a teacher. It's called The Dream Keeper by Langston Hughes. Bring me all of your dreams, you dreamers. Bring me all of your heart melodies so I may wrap them in a blue cloud cloth away from the two rough fingers of the world. You know, I love this poem by Langston Hughes because it reminds me as a teacher, I want to encourage my students to dream. Dream, 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 dream. So that's why I chose The Dream Keeper as my go-to poem today. And I'm going to fold it up and I'm gonna keep it in my pocket and I'm gonna share it. We made our origami pockets. We have our pocket poem. Hopefully you'll take a chance and write your own poem. If not, I hope you search through some books. I hope you find some websites. I hope you find a poem that you love and that you connect with and that you share with somebody to celebrate Poem in Your Pocket Day and National Poetry Month. I would like to give a thank you shout out to Mr. Rob Hilton and Tony Jackson for sharing their poetry with us today. And before we leave, I'm going to share a video that I made called How to Eat a Poem. Don't judge me. I like poems with food. Until next time. Hey, man. What are you doing? Do nothing. I'm just cooking up a poem. What do you mean cooking up a poem? Come on, man. Let's just hit the buffet. Nah. 
We gonna eat a poem and we'll do it my way. I flip it, I flap it, rip the wrapper, then I snap it. Treat a poem like an egg and I crack, 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 crack it. it. Chowing down words, I slurp, I burp, blend it all together, make, make it, it tasty, tasty like, like dessert. dessert. No fork, no knife, no name for a spoon. Like pepper, I crush it, hum it up a tasty tune. That's, That's how, how you, you eat, eat a poem. poem. That's how you eat a poem. That's how you eat a poem. Okay. Okay. Just make sure you clean up. I will.